I thought Tommy was sleeping with us. I thought Tommy was sleeping with us. I'm checking to see if this is a foldout. I've barely had any journal entries since we arrived, and I'm writing this one with a god-awful headache. Not a good track record so far, Linda. I tried to get Dan to take a night off last night, but he said he just didn't have the time. So I opened that bottle of wine myself after Tommy got to bed and somehow finished the whole thing. I knew I should have eaten something, and now I'm paying for it. All right, time to see if my stomach's settled enough to figure out where we put the aspirin. It's going to take a while to get used to where everything is in this place. Writer's block turned into writer's fog or something like that. I never found my notebook. I guess it's just gone. Did we lose it in the move? Leave it at home? I ended up having Alice find out about Scott and Sarah by overhearing a phone call.
I think we've done a good job of putting on happy faces for Tommy. If he knows there's something wrong, he's not showing it. We told him this is just a fun family vacation, and he seems to like it here so far. But this might be it for Dan and me. Neither one of us has said the word yet, but I know it's right there under the surface. We've been dancing around it. I can't even bring myself to write the word here. Writing it would be almost as bad as saying it, because once it's there, it becomes real, a thing we have to deal with. I'm not ready for that yet. We agreed to make this a fresh start. I meant it, I think he did too. Now we just have to treat each day like a new beginning. I promise. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. Interesting. to find out. How's it going? All right. Barb, how are things? Is school still taking up all of your time or is anything new going on? We've been up here for a week or so and I can already tell it's gonna be great for painting. There are hardly any distractions and this house has a room they called the conservatory in the brochure which really just means it has a lot of windows. Whatever they call it, it's a great space for working. The second floor blocks most of the Northern light but I'll manage. I took Tommy down to the beach today and you should have seen how excited he was. I wish I'd brought my camera. He kept looking back up at the house like he couldn't believe it was so small from down there. He seems to have taken to this place really well so far, which is such a load off our minds. We didn't know what to expect, but so far so good. Anyway, let me know how things are going. Yours, Linda. Thank you. 
Brighter's block. Brighter's block. I can't believe I just wrote that. Writer's block. There, again. Those two words are apparently the only damn thing I can write. I don't think it's been this bad since high school. Mr. Holder's class, an essay about Faulkner. Dan Kaplan, little-known author of Tramer's Way and Windsong, has run out of steam. Closed my eyes last night and saw a literary register article about myself. That was the first line. Paul wants three chapters next week, and so far I've got 2,000 words so sloppy I can barely read them. I cannot blow my schedule. Paul said Grofield's been very clear about what comes next if I keep slipping deadlines. Why did this happen as soon as we got here? This was supposed to simplify things, but so far it's been nothing but staring at a blank page. <sighs> Maybe a walk will help, or a long drive, or a drink. Tommy rode into town with me today. He saw some kids his age playing on the swings at the park, and I could tell he wanted to go play with them. It got me thinking, did we swing the pendulum too far just to get him away from those bullies? Kids can bounce back quick sometimes. What if this is the worst thing we could have done? Then he asked how Daddy's book was going, and without even thinking, I said, great, my man. Felt awful right away. It's a white lie, sure, but why not be honest? When he was younger, he was just a bundle of physical needs, but now he's like a mental, emotional sponge. He's around Linda and me all the time, and I can see him changing every day in a thousand small ways. That scares the hell out of me. What am I teaching him with a white lie? Do you think coming here will help? It has to. Tommy rode into town with me today. He saw some kids his age playing on the swings at the park, and I could tell... Why does he keep doing that? I think it broke again. 
maybe. Like. It's such a crazy thought, the three of us all alone in this house all summer. I never thought we could afford a place like this, but the price surprised us both when we saw it. I wonder if there's something wrong with it. Maybe it has a raccoon problem or a toilet that backs up. Guess we'll find out soon enough. Oh, and I'm painting again. I got set up today. I felt... It's such a crazy thought, the three of us all alone in this house all summer. I never thought we could afford a place like this, but the price surprised us both when we saw it. I wonder if... Whoa, what? There it is. There it is.
Oh, I can't say that. Anne, I'm going to cut right through the pleasantries and ask you, who is this Ryan that mom mentioned on the phone? Someone new? Are you trying to keep it a secret, or did it just slip your mind the last time we talked? Spill it! Things here are moving along, I guess. When we came up, I thought it would be great to have more dedicated time to paint, but I didn't realize it would be so isolating. I miss having more people around and having new ideas floating about. I got lucky in town last week, though. I found an artist co-op called Makeshift, and it seems really interesting. It's not too big, but there are lots of different types of artists there. I'll probably call and try to get more details. I don't remember if I told you this, but I've been thinking about going back to painting full time. Anyway, enough about me. Tell me what's up with you. Love, Linda. I only met Rick once, at a family reunion that must have been, what, 15 years ago? Turns out he made his fortune by, get this, selling high-end pipes. The Sherlock Holmes kind, not the plumbing kind. He must have been a hell of an interesting guy. I mean, he found a niche and made his way in the world. You have to respect that. It makes me wonder, am I giving everything I have to this book or am I leaving myself an out? It isn't announced yet. I could always pull the plug. I'd never get another advance again, sure, but there isn't a gun to my head. Unless I put one there. M metaphorically, of course. Finish my book in December. I... Don't joke like that. Just mailed the package to Paul, and I might have dodged the bullet. I was most of the way through writing some pretty embarrassing stuff. Alice eavesdropping on a phone call to give one particularly ugly example. When I decided to look for my notebook one more time, Maybe it was desperation, but something just told me to try it. I lucked out and found it this time and almost sprinted back to the office to see how much I could repair. I didn't have time to rework at all, but I sent Paul a good outline with the chapters I did have. I hope it works. Thank you. 
I already played with it. What about your rocket? I already played with it. Hey, mommy. Hmm? Hey, pumpkin. Look over there. What quick, the... quick. Gotcha. I knew it. Oh my God, what is that thing? Gotta get some ideas. And I'm gonna what? Hmm. Oh, I can't say that. I've barely had any journal entries since we arrived, and I'm writing this one with a god-awful headache. Not a good track record so far, Linda. I tried to get Dan to take a night off last night, but he said he just didn't have the time. So I opened that bottle of wine myself after Tommy got to bed and somehow finished the whole thing. I knew I should have eaten something, and now I'm paying for it. All right, time to see if my stomach's settled enough to figure out where we put the aspirin. It's going to take a while to get used to where everything is in this place. Is there something out there? The entire world's out there.
Riders walk. It's such a crazy.
Tommy rode into town with me today. He saw some kids his age playing on the swings at the park, and I could tell he wanted to go play with them. Do you think coming here will help? It has to. I think we've done a good job of putting on happy faces. Me too. Me too. I promise. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. It's such a crazy thought. What? Writer's block. I can't. Hey. Hi. <laughs> <laughs>
Blast off!
It just never stops. Every time I plot something I think will hold together, it falls to pieces. This thing was supposed to be done months ago, but the further I get, the harder it is to make it all work. Nothing's ever as simple as it seems at first. I'll think about a problem for days, finally come up with a fix, and then realize it breaks something somewhere else. I can barely hold all the threads together. Sometimes this thing just feels too big for me and I want to burn it and walk away. But what else would I do? And the deadlines don't help either. I can't think harder or faster. This stuff comes when it comes, and getting stressed out about it just makes it harder to get the words down. Like right now, I'm writing about the thing instead of working on the thing. Damn it, Dan, get to work. Right down there. Right down there. Cool, can we go? Writer's block turned into writer's fog or something like that. I never found my notebook. I guess it's just gone. Did we lose it in the move? Leave it at home? I ended up having Alice find out about Scott and Sarah by overhearing a phone call. That's awful. Having Alice eavesdrop on them completely kills the sympathy I've been trying to build for her. What a junk solution. But I had to get something down and move on. I guess that was it. Hopefully I can come back and fix it later. How could it possibly do that again? I knew we should have eaten something with the wine last night. My head is killing me. It would have been worse if Dan hadn't come down to help me finish it, though. I didn't expect to see him, but he does have a way of surprising people. I wish we'd had a full night together, but maybe we can do that soon. I'm glad we got even a little time to catch up. We only got through the first side of the record, but we talked about the studio and my new painting, which was nice. It's good to know he's at least trying. What is it, Mommy? What is it, Mommy? I don't know yet, honey.
What is that? It was right there. Has it been five years already? I still remember the thought that blindsided me when I saw Tommy for the first time. He is my new creative work. TJ gave me such a look when I told her I was going to cut back on my painting, but she doesn't have any kids so there's no way she could understand. It's hard to top creating an entire person. Maybe she thought Dan told me I had to stay home. <laughs> that would have been a very short conversation. Still, I can't ignore the fact that it's time to figure out what on hold means. What would it look like to go back full time? Do I want to? Big news, Barb. I'm putting on a show. Can you believe it? I've already got butterflies. It's been so long. I'm glad it's a small gallery so I can ease my way back into things a bit. And I want to do it right. I'd forgotten how much work goes into things that aren't painting when it's time to put on a gallery. You know I could never stand all the logistical rigmarole. Plus, I have a piece I really want to finish before the show. So much to do. I want to take it seriously and go through the whole process, though, because if the show goes well, who knows? Hope to hear from you, and hope you can come, of course. Yours always, Linda.
Anne, I just got off the phone with Mom. She told me about Grandma Joe. I know we expected it sooner rather than later, but this is hitting me so much harder than when Granddad died last year. Do you remember going to Grandma Joe's house after school on Wednesdays and playing until Mom got off work? How Grandma Joe always had a surprise for us? Even if it was just cookies in the oven, she'd always time it so the whole house would smell like them when we got there. I hope the minister captures those little moments because they don't seem as little now. I wish the circumstances were different, but it will still be good to see you at the funeral. What am I saying? You probably won't even get this until after the funeral. I guess I just needed to write anyway. Love, Linda.
my mom. We just got back from the show, and I still don't know how I feel about it. The turnout was okay, and I did sell a piece. I learned a long time ago to never complain about selling anything, no matter how small, so that's good, no matter what. But part of me also feels like the glass was half empty. The promo was okay, but I think the abstract layout was a little too weird for the paper. I really should have gone with more text. Then again, it was good of Dan to have helped with that part at all, so who knows how bad it would have been without that. I guess I was most excited to see what kind of feelings the show would bring back up, and it was just too half-hearted to know. Disappointment and excitement in equal parts. I still have some thinking to do. Is she in heaven? I'm sure she is, honey. I'm so sorry. Tell me what I can do. Just be here for me. Just called Paul. Didn't even get a chance to explain before he started in on me. Reamed me out. Absolutely killed me. No point in writing any more than that. Writing everything here instead of working on the book is what screwed me in the first place. I walked out to the bluff to remember Grandma Jo and say goodbye. And on the way back, I started thinking about what it really means to have a family, to make that your focus. She seemed to take such joy in being surrounded by her family, providing for them, taking care of them. 
I hope I never took that for granted. When I got back to the house, a question hit me that I can't get out of my head. What will Tommy think about Dan and me when he gets older? And what if Tommy has kids of his own? I can't even begin to think of myself as a grandmother. I haven't even been a mother for that long and I'm still feeling my way through what it means to be a good one. At least I'll always have an example. I miss you, Grandma Jo, and I'll never forget you. I promise. I walked out to Most of you here knew my grandmother. For those who didn't, I truly wish you had. She was an example for all of us. Her warmth, her caring, and her smile were impossible to forget. It's still hard for me to believe she's gone. Without her, the world is... I wouldn't have thought that. Hello. Hey, can't hear you. How could it possibly do that?
Let me call his mommy. Let me call his mommy. Let me call his mommy. Can Davy sleep over? Let me call his mommy. Paul gave it to me today. He was righteously pissed about missing that reading. No, I don't know. I don't think he's pissed at me exactly. He knows why I missed the reading. Grovefield came down hard on him and he had to vent somewhere more likely. But still, damn. And the worst part is the chapter still needs work. I have to find some time to clean it up. Soon. What about Tommy? What about Tommy? You can sleep with us. What about Tommy? You can sleep with us. I thought Tommy was sleeping with us. I'm checking to see if this is a fall down. I thought Tommy was sleeping with us. We just got back from the funeral. It was even harder than I expected, but it was moving to see just how many people loved Grandma Jo. She really was a special woman. Dan was there every step of the way, even though he got in a lot of trouble for missing that book signing. I don't think it's fair how mad they got at him about that. It was a funeral. But I guess that doesn't count for much in the business world.
Blast off! Blast off! I took Tynan up on the book jam. He hasn't seen a word of my new book, and fresh eyes are priceless. He bailed me out on Tramer's way. I hope he understands how much of that book worked because of him. I still remember when we were walking to the pond, and he had the idea about using newspaper clips and police reports. Of course, no matter how many times I tell interviewers it was his idea, they just keep giving me the credit. Maybe they just want the tidy auteur version. Oh well, can't change that. Let's just hope he has an idea for this one too. Freddy can't get here soon enough. It was like...
I got it. <laughs> Tynan and Kelly left this morning. I wish they could have stayed a little longer, but it was great having them. It felt just like college again. Fishing, having a few beers, talking about how we're going to conquer the world. Working through some issues on his book even gave me an idea for how to fix the logjam in Act 2. Funny how creativity works sometimes. I've got to remember to put him in the acknowledgments. And when I finish my book in December, I... Don't joke like that. Don't joke like that. Don't joke like that. Don't joke like that. <laughs> what about your rocket? What about your rocket? I already played with it.
Hey, Mommy. Hey, Pumpkin. Is there something out there? The entire world's out there. Mom tried to hide it, but I can tell when she's disappointed. I hate that they couldn't come, especially after they tried so hard to make time. Maybe if she'd called before they changed plans, it would have gone smoother. It's impossible not to think about the rough patches Mom and Dad hit without thinking about Dan and me. I should bring that up to him and see what he says. He's mentioned their history before. I'd love to hear his answer when I make the comparison. Can he talk his way out of that one? I called the co-op today. It isn't wildly expensive, but it sure doesn't fit into the budget. It was a bigger letdown than I thought, not being able to just sign up on the spot. It gets so lonely here sometimes. And I think Tommy's starting to feel it too. We try to play with him every day, and the woods here are pretty magical for someone his age. But kids need to be around other kids sometimes. He can only play with his cars so often. Sometimes I wish there were actual neighbors here. The only friend he's made is Davy, but seeing them at the park once in a while isn't the same as having someone to pal around with every day. It's summer vacation and he's pretty much all alone.
Hmm? Whoa! Wait! Come back! Gonna find you. It's just not healthy. It's looking good, Tommy. Really? Cool. Hmm. Should I have run the ad? I don't know if it would have helped a book, but I still spent all day kicking myself. Did I cop out? Is there some other reason why I didn't want to put the book out there yet? How am I supposed to believe I'm doing something that matters if I'm scared to tell the world about it? Damn it. Way to build your confidence, Dan. That's really cool, Tommy. Nope, sorry. Hey, do you see that? Tommy! Linda!
but he promised. If he doesn't do it, I'll help you, honey. Alan, hey man, this is going to sound odd, but I could use some advice. I'm in hot water here because, well, I've been drinking more lately. Man, there's just no good way to write that. I mean, I used to drink and write all the time in school. You remember that, right? I guess I got away from it when we got married and definitely after Tommy came along. But he's in bed by 8.30 every night now. And let me be clear, I'm not blacking out or driving drunk. You know I'd never do something like that. I just have a few drinks while I'm working, safe and sound in the house. A writer who drinks isn't exactly unheard of. Well, could I sound more defensive? But here's the hell of it. It's working. It's brought back that college hunger, that energy, and in the last week or two, the book's just singing. I don't even know what I'm asking here. Maybe I just wanted to start the conversation. If you get a chance, give me a call. Dan. If he uses that Hemingway quote one more time, pretty much every night he's either super focused on his novel or too drunk for us to spend a regular night together. That used to be our time. We would put Tommy down for the night, have a glass of wine, two at the most, and talk about our days or maybe listen to a record. Now I'm lucky to get one night a week where he's sober and not writing. Most nights he has a bourbon, no wait, make that four, and I read in bed until I fall asleep. He tries not to wake me up when he comes in, but you're never as quiet and graceful as you think you are when you're drunk and in a dark room, no less. Of course I want his book to be great, but I also want my husband back. Here we go. Hey, Daddy. My man. <laughs> Come on. Really? Right drunk, edit sober. Apparently Hemingway said that. Or maybe someone else did. It doesn't matter, because it's true. To write, you have to be fearless. You have to make choices and plow forward. Surprise the reader, surprise yourself. Make something that matters, not something safe. What does drinking do? It suppresses inhibitions. Yeah, there are typos, but that's what copy editors are for, and it, it's not like I'm drinking all day. I'm fixing most of this stuff myself each morning. Or 
early afternoon, I guess. I'm not stumbling around drunk all day and pissing myself. I'm trying to create something they'll remember me by. No one can imagine how stressful it is unless they've tried it. The pressure's so bad I just want to give up sometimes. On those nights a drink is the only way to turn my mind off and get some sleep. When the book is done, I'll dial it back. If he uses that Hemingway quote, I'm faster. Why don't you stop it too? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Just got back from the co-op. Tuesdays are pretty much my favorite day of the week now. Today, Monica showed me some brush techniques for blending my tones more evenly. She really is amazing. I can't believe how much she can get done in a week. I'm not sure I could keep up that pace even if I could do nothing but paint every day. Going in is always a little bittersweet, though. I can't help but think about how great it would be to go two or maybe even three days a week. But it means a lot that Dan's giving up his time to help me out with this. I know he's trying as hard as he can. Just what? You saw it, right? Is it here? Wait, where did it go? I know I saw something. You're not crazy. You're not crazy. <laughs> it's just... Again? It's broke.
Anne, what's the latest with you? I hope you're doing better than I am. I'm going a little stir-crazy. Dan loves it here, but he's just riding all day long, so he could be anywhere. I could use a change of scenery. I've walked every trail in the woods and even started a few of my own. It's great getting away from the city, but I wouldn't exactly call this roughing it. Tommy's certainly having a good time exploring the woods. Sometimes we go together, and if I'm in the studio, he knows he can play outside where I can see him, and to stay away from the cliff. Do you remember when we were kids trying to jump the creek in the woods behind the house? I think Tommy's getting into that phase now, climbing trees and all that. Oops, <laughs> I got a little carried away there. You probably don't need to hear about all of our outdoor adventures. Sorry about that. Well, let me know how you're doing. Love, Linda. Oh, what a fun. I'm going out for a hike. Okay, be safe. I'm going out for a hike. I finally got through to Dan, at least a little. He said I was nagging him, so I showed him the pamphlets Dr. Walker gave me. He couldn't explain away science, though he did try. I could tell he didn't like it, but he signed up to run two days a week. I wish it was more, but I'll take what I can get. You know, can always be better. Always be better. I was worried. I was worried. I was worried. I was worried. Yeah, you know, can always be better. Always be better. Haven't had a drink on a weeknight in two weeks. Came up with a new slogan. Write sober, rewrite sober, rewrite sober. Hemingway it's not, but it's good to smooth things over with Linda and Tommy a bit. Gotta admit, I don't miss hangovers, but still, I do sometimes miss sitting down with a drink and a crazy idea. What? What the? Penny, thanks so much for your letter. It made my day. Tramer's Way came out a while ago now, so I don't get letters like this too often. Writing can be a pretty isolating profession at times, which makes it a big boost to hear that someone out there is getting something from my work. Your support means the world to me. 
To answer your question, I'm indeed in the midst of writing a new book. I don't have a title or a release date yet, but I'm plugging away on it slowly but surely. I plan to finish it by the end of summer, and I truly hope you enjoy it when it comes out. Thanks again for your kind words. Dan Kaplan Hey, Dad. Hey, bud. I've got to stay on the book. This is my chance to do something people remember, something that matters. If this one isn't good enough, there might not even be a next one. Certainly not one without all sorts of publisher strings attached. This is why we saved up enough to take the summer off. I'm out of excuses. Of course, a long weekend would be fun, but that's also the problem. How do you stay hungry when you've gotten used to weekend getaways? How do you recapture that feeling of being a broke college kid chasing a dream? How do you get back out on that limb again, scared it's going to break, but inching out anyway? Listen to me. Wound up so tight. Maybe taking one night off might help after all. You just Broke checked again. that one. Be careful, honey. Yeah, that. I'm gonna need to call about that. Penny, thanks so much for your letter. It made Penny, thanks so much for your letter. It made my day. Tramer's Way came out a while ago now, so I don't get letters like this too often. Hi, Mom. Hey, Pumpkin. It's just... It's been so long. Hmm? 
I just checked that yesterday. I'll figure it out. We just checked that one. Three days in, I'm still trying to figure out where to take the new piece. It's changing as I go, which is always exciting and sort of the point, but this one feels a little aimless. I keep snapping out of a daze and realizing I've been staring out the window for five minutes instead of working. When we first got here, I was excited to have a studio with so many windows and so much natural light, but now it feels almost like a cage. Why be this close to nature but not be, well, in it? Actually, cage isn't the right word. This place is beautiful, and there are so many more trees than back home. I guess it's more of a reminder when it's right there the whole time, not just an idea or something for the weekend. Anyway, back to the painting. I'm not going to get anything done on it sitting here writing. Anne, what's the latest with you? I hope you're doing better than I am. I'm going a little stir-crazy. Dan loves it here, but he's just riding all day long, so he could be anywhere. I could be. Thank you. 
be something to help. Barb, sorry it's been so long since I've written. Things have been hectic around here, and I'm trying to figure out a way to get things back on track. I don't really want to get into it, but we're getting pulled in a lot of different directions right now. Nothing hurtful, just competing priorities, I guess. Although those can get worse and worse over time. I mean, Dan and I, before we got up here, you know we'd started to drift. Look at that. I said I didn't want to get into it, and I did anyway. Enough about me. Please tell me you're doing well, and I hope this doesn't stress you out too much. I promise to write a happier letter soon. Yours always, Linda. You see that? Why did it do that? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> you saw something. Looking good, my man. Thanks. It was like this. if I didn't ever have to sleep. Last night after Linda went to bed, I spent some time, there's that word again, trying to make everything fit. I even drew up a little chart. The math is simple. It doesn't work. Technically, I could still get in eight hours, assuming I don't eat or need to do anything that's not writing. But what about letters, reading, dealing with Paul? Hell, what about doing the dishes or taking out the trash? Not to mention that knocking off for the day isn't like flipping off a switch. It takes time to crawl out of my head and start functioning like a normal person again. And I can't just split it up into smaller chunks. Sometimes it takes an hour of false starts just to get going on anything usable. And stopping just sends the whole process right back to square one. Something's got to give. 